Welcome to the Ladies in Conversation, Spiritually Speaking. We are delighted that you have joined us. And our topic for this evening is breaking down our favorite scriptures. And it will be part one, two, and three. Because each one of us has a number of favorite scriptures. But we only had to pick two. And that was really difficult because I was like, yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah, I like that. Oh, they I remember that one. <laughs> But for time's sake, we're going to do, each of us going to do two. We're going to talk about it and how it, uh, practically, how it applied to our life and how it made changes, how we may have stood on the promise and until we've actually seen it manifested in our lives. Because the promises of God are yea and amen. Yeah. And there are certain uh, scriptures, certain times or situations, certain seasons in your life that you actually uh, take that scripture and you stand and believe that God mm -hmm. is doing that particular word for you specifically uh, and we have faith to know that for instance one of my favorite scriptures is uh, I'm not going to tell you my two so I'm going to <laughs> throw it in my extra one no weapon formed against me will prosper every tongue that rises against me in judgment it will be proved to be in the wrong that's a good scripture to have because you know no matter what the weapon is you certainly don't want to see it prosper so I'll never forget when God started putting that on my heart to speak it out of my mouth because I never even knew that there was uh, some negativity going on behind my back, certain people saying certain things. And I kept feeling this uncomfortability. And I'm like, what in the world? It's like something was standing around my neck area. And I'm like, just so uncomfortable. And all of a sudden, and I didn't even know the scripture, and the Lord just started dealing with me about no weapon, and I'm like, no weapon, no weapon, what? <laughs> and so I had to look it up, no weapon formed against you will prosper, and I said, kept reading it, I kept meditating on it, and even this girl came to my office one day, and she gave me this little plaque, and said, no weapon for." I said, oh my God, that's like a confirmation. Mm -hmm. So we never know, you know, what God is working in, working up, and working out, but everything and all things, we have to have faith. So with that said, we're going to be discussing, like I said, part one, two, and three, uh, all of the scriptures that are our favorites, you know, Sonya's favorites and uh, Dovey's favorites and my favorites. We all can yeah. glean from the word because God is no respect of person. Mm -hmm. So it may be something that, because we all can use that scripture that says no weapon formed, all Christians, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, so with that said, I'm going to be quiet, and I'm going to just go forward and just start with uh, Sonia with her favorite scriptures, and we're going to talk about her favorite scriptures, and we'll just talk about it and conversate about it and why it's just her favorite, and maybe somewhere, maybe even, you know, we've had uh, touch our lives in a very special way. So with that said, Sonia, okay. what is your I know you got more than two. I have several. <laughs> and had, several. I know it was probably difficult to even select. But. It was. And I was just thinking one of them, I was like, I discussed that in another um, in another one of our radio recordings. And I'm thinking, ah, maybe I should have got another one. But it, it, it's well. <laughs> right. It's well. It's, it's well. well. It's because it's truly one of my favorites. God yeah. really spoke to me about it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share the other one for now, Absolutely. Uh, which is Matthew 6:33, and, uh, but, and it reads, but seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. And the Lord, he gave me that scripture years ago. This is when I was in the process of writing my book. And, and um, <clears throat> you know, when you're writing a book about your life, it's, it's the book is to heal others and mm -hmm. it's about domestic violence. It's about the things that I did and how God delivered me from a mm -hmm. lot of those things. And so when you're writing something like that, it will heal you. It's bringing wow. forth healing and deliverance That's in amazing. yourself. Yes. And so I knew um, I had a lot of issues trusting the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, because you hear like God is like your father, you mm -hmm. know, he's your heavenly father. Mm -hmm. Well, my perception of a father was so tainted oh, yeah. because of my the relationship I had with my natural father. Sure. So it was very difficult for me in my walk at the beginning to really trust God. I didn't trust him at all, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I was reading the word. I was really into the word. I was seeing how God was doing things in my life. And, you know, I would get to one, uh, you know, one section, you know, say my finances. Mm -hmm. And then I would see how he moved mm -hmm. when I tithe, you know, certain things right. I would see how he moved. But I still had that struggle and mm -hmm. a lot of things. Sure. 
because I had so much adversity and challenges mm-hmm. in my life. Um, but when he t- spoke to me this scripture, it really caused me to focus on him Amen. because I had so much going on around me. And the Lord is always reminding me, just focus on me. Mm. And, and yeah. still now with things that I go through in my challenges, God is saying, focus on me. And sometimes I have to ask God, how do I do that? You know, and just recently he said to me, don't worry about that. Mm-hmm. I want you to focus on me. I want you to do this, this, and this. Don't worry about the rest. I got it. Amen. And it was clear, and I was like rejoicing in it because he was like, just seek me first. So you basically, at that point, you got the revelation. Yes. Of, and it, it's like a light bulb went on. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's amazing how that happens. You know, you, you get a word <laughs> like, okay, but. Yes. And then all of a sudden, as time goes on, it, it just, once you get that light bulb experience, it's like it's on. Mm-hmm. It's on. Yes. I got this. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't make no. I'm yes. seeking the kingdom first. Yes. I'm seeking Amen. his righteousness first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yes. It like comes to life to you. Yeah. Whereas yeah. before you may have read it. And then I, I know sometimes I can read something two or three times and then I may be going through something and I'll read, I reread something. I'm like, wait a minute. I never got that last time I read that. Right. right. You know, that's what God well, It's does. probably because a lot of times it's, it's timing. Yes. Everything has its timing in yes. it. And it. I guess it's kind of got to get in you, saturate mm-hmm. in your heart or mm-hmm. get in your heart or your spirit and just just like, oh, oh, that's, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Revelation. Yes. And it brought me so <laughs> much like, peace. Yes. Because it was the same uh, uh, counsel and, and, and suggestion you were giving me. Just focus on God. Don't mm-hmm. focus on that. Don't. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I don't know how to do it. I was like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I, well, I'm, it's just I'm like having trouble. If, if I sit here and I focus on my glasses and I turn around and look at Dovey or you and I stop focusing on my... That's a good example. Mm-hmm. That's I a stop good looking. example. I stop. So when you say focus, and focus is a very powerful word in yes. the yes. walk of faith. Because focus is like when you start getting worry, anxiety, yes. fear, yeah. then you're not focused because mm-hmm. you're looking around at the circumstances. Mm-hmm. You're looking at the situation as yeah. it appears to be. Instead of looking up and say, God, I thank you. You said, yes. you said, seek you first. I'm seeking you right now because I need you. I need you. I need you. <laughs> because this situation, I need you. I thank you. I give you glory. So we have weapons. Yes. The weapons mm-hmm. of our warfare, not what, carnal. Carnal, but mighty through but God. Mighty through pulling, God. Pulling down strong strongholds. Yeah, yeah. Right. Amen. So when you focus, it's like going back to what God has done, what God mm-hmm. is doing, yeah. what God is saying. Mm-hmm. Yes, and yes, it keeps yes. the enemy where he belongs yes. underneath. And you are so mm-hmm. right because, mm-hmm. just like you use that example, when we take our eyes off, sure. then our mind starts thinking for us. Right. Instead of us remembering the scripture and what God is telling us to do, our mind will go off on a tangent. Right. You know, and oh, say, "Well, sure. what about oh, this? What about, what about that? What, that? what? What are you going to do here? What are you gonna... And okay. oh, no, no, let me get back on the yes. oh, God, yes. oh Lord Jesus. Well, just like with uh, Peter on the water, right? Oh, yeah. We oh, God, yes. God said, God said come to He was looking at Jesus, and he kept mm-hmm. walking. Good example. And then all of a sudden, he looked at what he was, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> he started yep. sinking. Right. The same, yes. same uh, concept. Yes. Same principle. Definitely. Mm-hmm. You know, Definitely so, so when you got that, seek you his kingdom and his righteousness first, and that light bulb came on, what was the first thing you had to change to make sure you wasn't deviating from your seeking him versus looking around well the first thing i did to change it was i praised them okay I, I, and weapon. i just felt that Good weapon peace yep mm-hmm. i felt that peace and i thought thank you god thank mm-hmm. you god thank you i get it now i get it now i get it now so i started doing the thing because he actually laid out i want you to focus on this mm-hmm. i want you to focus oh, on good. this mm-hmm. and i want you to focus on that these are the gifts I gave you. Amen. So focus on working on that. Don't worry about that. I got that. I got that. You know, and then I, and then, then I was saying, God, whatever you have for me. And, and I was like really conversating with the Lord. 
if you do it or if you don't do it, I thank you anyways. Wow. And I'm okay with That's it. That's good. I said, I'm okay with That's that. That's really good. Yeah. Because it takes off the worry. It takes yes. off the fear mm. of the unknown. Exactly. Yes. So now you can trust. I don't know how. I don't know the when. I don't even know the way. Mm -hmm. I know you, God. You're a good God. Yeah. So that part of that praise, I thank mm -hmm. you. Yes. No matter what happens. And so that keeps you in peace. Yes. Instead yes. of worry, fear, and anxiety. Mm -hmm. So... It's amazing because the promises, many of them, and I try to tell people this a lot, you know, a lot of them, when you read the word of God and promises, they're conditional. Oh, yes. Right. yes. Seek ye his kingdom and his righteousness. That's a seek. That's a yes. conditional yes. promise. Telling you what yes. to do first. Exactly. So Practical. that you can obtain what comes right. after. Yes. People think because they jump up and go to church and say a few prayers and, you know, maybe you read the word, but they're not doing the word. Right. Then they're, they're sabotaging uh, what God has purposed for them right. to receive from him as he's working it up, working it out, and working it on our behalf. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, yes, so as you're seeking his kingdom and the enemy comes to rob, steal, and destroy, then you go into your warfare if mm -hmm. it takes that. Because those are weapons. Praise, yes. worship, prayer. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, fellowship, all kinds of weapons. Pleading the blood, the, the name of Jesus, the uh, uh, whatever it takes. You want to dance around, dance around, <laughs> unto the Lord. <laughs> Because you're now, you're, you're seeking God in the myth of this situation. You're seeking his uh, divine intervention. Yeah. Yes. You know, he says, and seek his kingdom, his righteousness first, all these things. So whatever you trying to receive from the Lord, all these things are going to be added to you inevitably because everything the enemy stole from us, he's got to what? Get God back. is going to restore us. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. In fact, he can keep some of that old stuff. <laughs> you oh, you yeah, say absolutely. that all the time. You say, yeah. I don't want what some he took stuff. from me. I want the new stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Behold, <laughs> all things become right. new. Yeah, because some <laughs> of that stuff wasn't meant for you <laughs> in the first place. Yeah. So we just, we just want stuff yeah. right. so badly. You know, we're mm -hmm. not thinking, well, is this God's best for me? I'm fighting right. for this. And right. he got something so better you know for what? me. Right. To me, the most important things as far as I'm concerned in a lot of areas of my personal life is just the first thing I started experiencing with the walk of faith was the peace of God. Mm. I mean, once yeah. I started experiencing peace in my life, it was like it was on. Mm. Because I was, I would fight for that peace at all costs. If something came Amen. around me to disturb my peace, mm -hmm. get me upset, get me worried, get me fretting, get me all concerned, overly whelmed. Oh, it had to go. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ben yeah. there did that for umpteen years, mm -hmm. dealt with all those spirits. And finally, you get set free and delivered. Mm -hmm. And that enemy is trying to come back to, oh, no, it's on. Because mm -hmm. yes. now you, you know, you know your, your authority. Right, yes. Seeking the Lord, God mm -hmm. shows you your authority. Absolutely. And when the enemy tries to come back and do little things to you, then you can take your authority because you know you have it. Yes. Right. You don't have it before, exactly. before you because didn't you know. Exactly, have no, right. it's, what is the word of God says, the, the righteous are bold. Bold mm -hmm. is a lion. Mm. Bold. Mm -hmm. That's when you're like, what? Oh, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> even in fear, you can go there and still get free. Hey, man. Yeah, that's right. I take that step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's all. What was the other scripture you have? Oh, I have Isaiah 43. Well, before, before you mm -hmm. get to that one, why don't we take a station break? Okay. okay. And uh, we shall come turn back and we'll finish discussing Sonia's uh, second scripture and uh, we'll go from there. Are you seeing this? This is Daughters of Esther Presents Ladies in Conversation, spiritually speaking. They have a wonderful topic tonight and they're taking a quick break. So while they're breaking, why don't you pop on over to Heart Ministry Radio. We're also streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. Join the Daughters of Esther, Ladies in Conversation, spiritually speaking, every Tuesday evening at 5 p.m. right here on the Heart Ministry Radio Network. You'll be glad you did. Oh, they're coming back. Come on and join us. Welcome back to the Ladies in Conversation, Spiritually Speaking. And again, this is uh, part one, uh, breaking down our favorite scriptures. And as we already discussed, uh, one of the scriptures that Sonia uh, said that was her favorite was, of course, uh, Matthew 6.33, seek his kingdom and his righteousness first, and all these things will be added to you. And that goes for all of us. Oh. <laughs> so we seek, 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 seek him. Yes. Yeah. So with that said, Sonia, what is your other favorite? I know you have, like I said, a number. Just real quick, what did you before you get to your favorite, which is some of the other ones that you thought about? I like the one that you were talking about. Um, 
No oh, weapon. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Mm-hmm. I like the whole armor of God from yeah. beginning to end. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, gosh, She's a what is there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, because I have to yeah, fight. Yes, yes, we do. You know, I just yes. get free. Yeah, yes. and yes. same with the 633 yeah. when you're exactly. thinking about what the focus thing. When something comes my way, I have to get back, mm-hmm. you know, in line. Like, nope, nope. I cast that down in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You know, just pulling down the stronghold. Yeah. That's another yeah. one. Yeah. Down the stronghold. All those things. Yeah. Um, there's more. I just, yeah. like, there's oh, yes. so yeah. many so more. Many. I know one of the ones uh, that I was struggling with, whether I wanted to choose it or not, which I didn't, but it's like one of the favorites, and I'm sure we all like it, is I know the plans that I have for you, yeah, plans yeah. to do you good oh, and not yes. to be your plan, oh, to give you good. hope and to give you an expected end. Yes. Mm-hmm. So Jeremiah 29, 29 11. 11. Oh, yes, mm-hmm. yes. So I said, yeah, but mm-hmm. I said, let me go with the other one. And I like the one in, um, I think it's in Genesis, when Joseph speaks to his brother, he says, the enemy came in to do me harm, mm. but God used me so I can save the Amen. people. And God gave me that in regards to my ministry and, uh, and dealing with domestic violence and stuff. So the enemy meant to, to tear you down, sure. but I'm going to use that to bless others. Absolutely. So, because like we, we always say, you know, everybody has a story. Yeah. And if yeah. we're in the kingdom now, we don't yeah. pass through some some real rough places mm-hmm. in, in life and self because we who's the God of this that's world? That's the truth. It's Satan. So the God of yeah. this world being Satan, we was under his uh, influence and his wicked works of darkness. And finally we get set free and saved and. And look back and see how the enemy was trying to, you know, destroy our lives and oh, yeah. devastate us and take us off before our time and all the whole nine yards. And mm-hmm. now we finally get insight, wisdom and revelation mm-hmm. of who we are and what we have in Christ. Oh, come on with it. <laughs> yes. That's how we have to be, because God has given us this authority. Yeah. He's given us this everything we need, the armor, the wisdom, yes. the direction. The Holy Spirit all up in the house mm-hmm. telling you which way to go, how to go, and what to do. Sometimes we just got to always have, I preach this message one time. It says, uh, shut it up, shut it off, and shut it down. I remember mm-hmm. that message. That was good, too. Because <laughs> yep, you do. Because like you mm-hmm. were saying earlier, I think you were saying about all these voices start mm-hmm. telling you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So why don't we look at the second one you got here? Okay. So the second one is Isaiah 43, 18 oh. through 19. And I like, again, I like the whole passage of that. Because the Lord, when he gave it to me, he gave me the whole passage. But these two things really stuck out to me. Um, and they are, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. It still hits me like you just said it to me yesterday. Mm -hmm. It really hits me because of just my mind's sake and and the way I just used to do things, like really just meditate Mm -hmm. on the past. I meditated on the on the things that were negative that was going on and how do I get out of that and and God I and I wanted God to do it a certain way like you know and the only miraculous thing I can think of of the time was when he parted the 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 Red Sea Mm -hmm. and he talks about that in in, you know the scriptures prior to this they said no don't forget about that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do something new. Mm-hmm. And when he said that, it was like, I knew it was going to be better than right, that. Right, right, right. You know, and that's why it just touched me because regardless of the, the miracles he's done for you before, he's so powerful. He'll blow your mind every time. Absolutely. <laughs> and then he always <laughs> blows my mind. It's kind of like, don't, when he, that one scripture says, See, his thoughts are not our thoughts. Our thoughts and, his ways and yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and then he wants to bless and give you exceedingly and abundantly even more than yeah. you yeah. can even think. Yeah. Or even ask. Or yeah. even ask. Amen. Yeah. And if you think about that, more than we can think, I mean, we, our imagination and everything is nothing compared to everything else. Because we don't even think of half the stuff that God knows. You know, I mean, that yeah, is just. His wizards and not ours and his yes. stories. Yes. So that's why he said, I give you exceedingly and abundantly more than yes. you not- can even ask and or think. Oh, yeah. So I remember when I first, uh, that was one of my other favorite scriptures <laughs> coming, you know, forward. I'm like, more than I can answer. Think now, Lord, you know, I can <laughs> 
know, right? We, yeah, we could do. We could play could it go there. Thick, you right? know, you really go there. You know, imagination, as you were saying. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, it's like, hmm, yeah. But guys, mm-hmm. move it out. Move aside. Move aside. Exactly. Exactly. Because <laughs> just think, he created everything out yeah. of void. Absolutely. Yes. How yes. can we top that? I know. That's right. <laughs> How can I, we top I can't, that? So what we do I, is we shortchange ourselves when we reduce God to what we want, what Absolutely. we feel, and what yes. we think. Yes. So it's it's like we shortchange ourselves, we sabotage, because we're trying to reduce God to do what we think, what we like, and what we want. And God is saying, excuse me. <laughs> Get out of the way. I have a, a whole lot more than that for you. Can you please? Yes. <laughs> because if we don't get out the way, then mm. we it's like we, we're we struggling where there's areas you don't even have to struggle in. You just mm-hmm. openly receive mm-hmm. what's already yours to be had. Amen. 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 So when you was reading that scripture about the form of things, I remember this one girl, she was always, um, the first time I ever heard it, she said, it's like driving a car, looking in the rearview br- mirror. What's going to happen in Emerald if you keep looking back? You're going to, you might hit something. Crash and, you're going to crash. <laughs> you're more like you're going to hit something. Yeah, if you keep yeah. looking in the rear view mirror and driving, yeah. you're going to hit something. Mm-hmm. Something's yeah. going to happen. And, and it may be as serious as this. It may be your life. Oh, without a doubt. Oh, it that may cause absolutely. your life or somebody else's be, yeah, life. Yeah, because you're looking back instead of looking forward with what? Expectation. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So, okay, let's talk about that. How do you look forward? How do I look forward? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of, like one way that I do it is when those ideas or those thoughts and those voices pop in my head, I always say, no, I've already given it to God. Because I had to do that even after he has given me that and told me to focus on this, this and that. So I was like, nope, I've already given that to God. So I have to get myself situated back in line, back on that straight, narrow Mm -hmm. path. And, um... Just think about his goodness and expect the unexpected. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like he has so much better for me. Right. So I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm. And so I have to sometimes speak to myself, shut those voices down, counsel and, and, and pray about those things and say, Lord, I've already given this to you. I trust you, Lord. I know you have something good for me. I know you care for me. So I build myself up and encourage myself right. and know that the, um, cause I, a, a good sister told me what happened to you before God is not going to allow that to happen again. Amen. You don't even have to worry about it good because thing. that was a fear that I had sure, that right. if I allow this, is this going to happen to again. me again? Right. I, I don't want it. I can't do that again. You know what I mean? And so Those things encourage me, you know, and then I focus on those nuggets and those words of wisdom Mm -hmm. that people have given me. Because to me, it's like God spoke to them to give me a promise. So that keeps me in line and focused. Okay, God, I won't have to go through that again. Amen. You told me I don't have to worry about that, you know. So it's it's that kind of thing. So it's almost like meditating, getting the mind of Christ. Yes. So when you speak what he says or you speak in accord and align with what God is, says mm-hmm. or does, then we begin to take a hold to his thoughts, mm-hmm. his mind, yeah. his, his attitude, yeah. his, his uh, promises, his goodness, his graciousness, his love, his all these wonderful and great and awesome things that he's purposed to accomplish. Because now we're not going to walk in areas of fear, lack, and limitations. We're going to walk knowing that I don't know what, how, the way. I know right. he's a good guy with a great Amen. plan. Amen. And I yeah. surrender to you. Amen. And yeah. we have trust. And that's where the trust comes in. Yeah. Yes. And it takes away. And you have to build yourself up to, for that. And mm-hmm. People don't understand. A lot of times we may start off feeling nothing. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. But if you speak something out, you meditate, and you build yourself up in your most holy faith and faith and prayer and, and uh, hearing the word, hearing the word. That's right. What are you listening to? 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 Because whatever you are listening to is what you're receiving. That's right. A lot of people are listening to the systems of the world, and they wonder Mm -hmm. why they don't have no victory, Mm -hmm. because they can't even get a good thought from the throne room. Right. Because we're trying to reduce God down to our thoughts. Yes, that's true. So it's time to look up. (laughs) (laughs) From what our help comes from. Yes. There you go. Hallelujah. Well, we just give God the glory and the honor, and we thank you, uh, Sonia, for those uh, promises, and because... uh, Remember, the promises are yea and amen. 
many of the promises are with condition and God is no respect of person. And, you know, you may have to take a promise to hold on to, to speak it, to declare it, to create it, do whatever it takes to build yourself up in your faith, to know that you can walk the walk of faith until God works it up, works it out, manifests his plan, purpose, and his good pleasure in and over and around and about your precious holy life. Because you are precious in his sight. You are special. Mm. And ain't no devil going to have you because he couldn't get you while you was out there. Yeah. How's he mm. going to get you now that Amen. you're marked by the blood, Amen. redeemed by the blood? Purge through the blood. Oh my God, don't get me started. <laughs> Spirit filled, tongue talking, Bible toting people of God. God's got a great plan for all of us. Mm -hmm. yes, and it's does. our time to just openly receive and know when your help coming from. And take that word and just put mm -hmm. it in your heart and speak it out of your mouth. Speak it out of your mouth and gets in your heart. And the mind begins to think like your father mm -hmm. thinks. Your yes offspring of God, Abba, Daddy, Father, God. God bless you, and we hope to see you next week.